Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode two of the Mystery Cast. Woo! It's too spoopy. I'm, uh, I'm your host, TG, and joining me today is the usual suspects of Greg Dog. The lack of yellow Dorito demons is most disturbing. The lack of yellow Dorito demons. God. Tree beard. You find yourself stuck in a chamber with five losers talking about a cartoon show. Roll for sanity loss. Oh god, no. A dusted on horse. Roll dexterity and larceny to steal a nine foot tall animatronic badger. Oh god. <laughs> And scat. Yay, I'm here. <laughs> That's a lovely <laughs> intro. <laughs> so, uh, we're here to talk about today's episode, this week's episode, because this isn't coming out today. That would be insane. Uh, of Gravity Falls. Uh, dungeons, dungeons, and more dungeons. I'm sensing a theme here. I, I get the feeling there might be some dungeons. You uh, know, what about some dragons? The, 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 no, no, there's no dragon. There's what do you just, think? No, is this no, a no, reference? This isn't a reference to anything, obviously. Well, you see, Duster, this is the BDSM edition of D&D. Oh, oh, God. Now it makes much more sense. So do you have to roll your save word? Yes. No, you have to determine that at character creation. Otherwise, it's cheating. Shit. <laughs> All right. So uh, I guess let's just go around and give our impressions of the episode. Uh, Greg. Dig. I should have never let you host this because now <laughs> I'm just chosen first all the time as payback for making you go first. Yeah, that's the thing. Man. Well, Pay- I'll just Payback's again. Well, it, as long as you keep it going, I'll make it keep happening to you and Rock Talk. So have it your way, sir. But uh, in terms of the actual episode, yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> it's fantastic. It um, it really hits the whole RP thing on the nose. It's so silly, and it just. It got too real. We we've said that a lot before we got into this podcast call, but uh, yeah, it's it, it's perfect. And uh, yeah, the humor, the, the the meta humor is there when they um start talking about the. I think it was Ducktective, yeah, Ducktective being a kids show, but it's got an adult element and stuff that kids don't kids uh, will not understand. That that was great. And then just yeah, the the grunkle bonding between Dipper and. Grunkle Ford. That was that was adorable. It was good to see them uh, bonding, especially after it was kind of like, well, what kind of relationship are those two gonna have, or is he is Ford gonna push Dipper away to protect him? And yeah, it was nice just to see that happen and just put that worry away that they wouldn't interact. But of course they do. And yeah, Weird Al, great job as the guest star as always. He always seems to bring a lot to the roles he's um, asked to do, and. Uh, yeah, no different here. He was great as the, uh, the, what was it? The math mage? I don't even oh, remember that. God. It was, uh, it was a Probabilitron. Yeah, Probabilitron. Yeah, and it, I think that's it. That, that yeah, sounds right. So. But, uh, yeah, it, again, great. And, uh, uh prob- Probabilitor. Probabilitor. Yeah. There you go. But, uh,. Yeah, Alex Hirsch just seems to get what people want out of this show. It serves as a perfect family show where the kids can still enjoy it, but the fan base is just so satisfied with every episode in terms of the humor and the plot, and you can't help but just get invested in this and just want to see more and more and more, and goddamn, do I want to see more. And it's just, it, it was great, and... Yeah, just quick note, the fucking Zelda reference with Navi. I was, I was... hoping you'd get oh, that. Oh, yeah, no, I was dying. Of course you would I get was... it. That got me good, so A-plus, guys. Just another fantastic episode. Um, I I can't find anything to dislike about it, honestly. So, 10 out of 10. All right. Oh. High ranking from the first person. Let's move on to Treebeard. Hello. Alrighty, so uh, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but uh, th- th- this episode was, v- again, too real for me because me and these losers do like a uh, do a lot of tabletop RPGs over Skype almost weekly. 
We do it pretty regularly, and we saw this, and we're like, this is almost what it's like. <laughs> almost. almost. Except we're just more silly, even then. Oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You we, thought we what you think... saw in this episode was silly? Nah, we, we outdo no, that. It gets... You thought they were nerds! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man, we get into crazy territory. But yeah, the fuck... The comedy was great, and... I love the name of like of the princess in one of the, con- in one of the campaigns of Princess Unattain a Bell. <laughs> oh my god, I love oh, it. I... It's the best. Yeah. Fucking clever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Unattainable. Uh, Unattainable. That's like the best. And um, making it, you make up your own spells. I'm like, that's basically how Mage the Awakening works. I mean, there's more factors that go into it, but yeah, that's basically how it works. And, oh man. And another thing that I really like that I'm certain Hirsch is going to, uh, He's going to capitalize on that, especially when TG gives us the cryptogram of the day. The, yeah, what's it called? The Cycloptopus. Mm-hmm. When the Cycloptopus came into play and Ford said that you, you shouldn't, you mustn't let it taste human flesh. And right before Ford and Dipper start playing, the fucking Cycloptopus is on his face and it's tasting his flesh. And we never see him put it back in a jar, so I'm like, oh ho ho. I actually didn't see if it bit him. I know it left um, suction cup marks on his face. Did it bite him? I don't know. I need to go back but and it look was now. on his face, and no I one... mean, its its mouth was facing towards his head, so... Its mouth is the eyeball, though. Yeah, and that was up against his face, so... We'll see. I no would not be shocked if it came back into play. Yeah, knowing Hirsch, he'd totally take advantage of that. And you know what? I would want him to. <laughs> because, uh, yes. Things have consequences in Gravity Falls. And I can't wait to see where this one goes. I lo- But yeah, love the tabletop humor. Uh, we'll go into our experiences of that a little bit later. So, uh, yeah, at this point, it's getting to the point where ratings are almost irrelevant for this series. So, 10 out of 10. Uh, we need to start looking at other episodes before this so we can, like, talk about ones we might God, not like. Yeah, we need to find ones that we don't <laughs> like. I've we have to try hard to find episodes we don't like. Yeah, I don't hate any episodes, and that's yeah, I, really unbelievable to say, considering... There's pretty much two categories. Ones I liked and ones that were, you know, pretty good to some people. But it could have been better for me. Right. Yeah. Alright, next up, let's go with Duster. Oh. Me? What a shocking turn of events. Okay, I know, so right? I, I'm i pretty sure, at least to me, I want to imagine that the parable of Dungeons, Dungeons, and more Dungeons is actually a parallel to Rifts. At least I want to believe it is, because it sounds that complicated, arbitrary, and stupid. Uh, and can we just say that, uh, in terms of, like, the fan base and cosplaying and fan art and, you know, everything... Seuss has been really underrated, and this season is showing everyone why they should be ashamed of themselves. I mean, first he writes fan fiction, now he's a LARPer. No, Seuss is the best. Yeah, Seuss exactly. is fantastic. I, I, I personally underrated the character because I was focusing on everyone else, but you know what? I'm starting to like this guy. A lot more. But, <laughs> uh... But... I started out my tabletop gaming days in high school where I literally played in sub... In, this guy's mom's basement. <laughs> like, it's not even just making fun of a stereotype. We were living the stereotype. And it just got too real. Man, that is just too close. Uh, the one problem that I'm finding with Ford, though, is that uh, these guys know it. And I think I mentioned it in the previous podcast, but I am a diehard Law & Order fan. Like, down to the point that I may have seen one episode of Trial by Jury, and you guys don't even know what that is. And, yeah. uh, the voice what actor- the fuck is that? It, it was stupid. It was not worth it. <laughs> uh, but the guy who voices Ford plays, uh, the court-appointed psychiatrist that they bring in whenever someone claims to be insane in Law and Order. I can't unhear him whenever Ford opens his mouth. <laughs> oh, God. 
he has been kind of typecasted because I grew up way more with Law and Order than I did Gravity Falls. And for most uh, of us, he's Cave Johnson or J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah, a lot but, of the, for a lot yeah. of people, a lot of the nerds, he's Cave yeah, Johnson. Yeah, he, he's J. Jonah Jameson to me. Yeah, that's me too. <laughs> to me, he's the psychiatrist from Law and Order, the original. Uh, the Zelda reference, I, uh, I, so good. yeah, I knew someone out there was happy. Uh, and there was one point that I just went, Alex Hirsch, are you talking to your Tumblr fan base? Is that what you're doing? And that is the line I wrote it verbatim. I'm so invested in the lives of these characters. <laughs> It's true, though. You can't help but, like, get invested. It's so good. <laughs> and you know what? Here we are. We take time out of our week to uh, to watch a, a cartoon on a television or the internet, whichever. And then we take time to sit down on Skype with recording equipment and talk about cartoons, ostensibly for children, but this one is kind of, uh, like, engineered in an Animaniac sort of way, where both the young our generation and maybe parents can get along with this well my parents are now into it well i'm not my mom is at least <laughs> uh yeah so is mine yeah. <laughs> uh and i just i also have to confirm that the uh the larping section is really damn accurate that was that sums up my first LARPing experience. And the fireball yelling thing is also verbatim from my LARPing experience. So woohoo, Gravity Falls again I mean, getting too real. I mean the fireballs thing is a meme because uh because of that guy. Uh, uh there's a guy Oh yeah, like yeah, the lot six of the years ago. Yeah, like they they were at some convention and they they were doing a, a LARP thing and he he's like standing on a table with like rolled balled up napkins throwing them at throwing them at a dude going fireball fireball that's also what you yell in some uh in no, some it, it is larps. but like the reason it's being referenced here is almost certainly because of the meme like that's what most people think when they hear someone shouting fireball at this point i think of the awkward dorks and wizard robes that i decided that it would be fun to spend an afternoon with <laughs> Oh, God. To the point that some of the parents in the adjacent playground told us to move because we were freaking out the children. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah. Fun times. <laughs> yeah, welcome to Duster in High School, the Chronicles. <laughs> Duster in High School, the Chronicles. Yeah, that's a whole different podcast. So if you want to hear all about me being in high school, leave a comment. Uh, no, but... uh. I'm going to give this one a 10 out of 10, too, because it it was self-referential. for This is how you do self-referential humor without it being in your face and obnoxious. Yeah, no, it's, it was really good. I mean, this is... uh The people from the making the Scott Pilgrim movie can take some notes from this. This is how you do it without pissing off your audience. Something yeah. that hasn't been brought up, the, the Infinity Dice. Yeah. I, yeah. Like, I, I love that. It like, happen. it's just... I'm just wondering what the critical failure options are on that, since there's, inf you know, infinite critical failures. So, just... Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna I say like this the, uh, the, that thing from the Ark of the Covenant. Face <laughs> melting, it's... explosions. <laughs> there's also literally anything can uh, happen. Do, you gotta remember, it's banned in over 9,000 I made that joke dimensions. during my react. Yeah. Well, it's too bad that, uh, that tree bird got kicked out of the podcast, you know? Yeah, it's a real shame. I really liked his insight and all the. If only he'd learn not to Wait. repeat ancient memes. Wait, let me join Treebeard out of a podcast. Y you know the ending of Duck Detective? It's not all it's quacked up to be. All right, yeah, man. It's weird. Yeah, it's I'll weird be walking out right now. See you all later. It, it's weird how our podcast only has three people in it. it I, I swear we had. That's not objecting to anything. So it's weird that there's only two of us here. So what are you doing later? <laughs> I'm just completely ignored. <laughs> that's, that's something. All right, uh, Scott, just... Scott, talk, do say things. Um, not really much I can add. Uh, it was great episode. I liked it. Where the whole oh, uh, the whole bullshit, bullshit, and then roll what happens thing is hilarious. 
That's that's pretty much very similar to what happens in our Treebeard games. It's like we're like, I want to do this wacky thing. Treebeard's like, okay, let let me come up with a role for that. For give me a few minutes to come up with a role. Uh, he's like, uh, okay, roll this. I'm like, okay. <laughs> And you play a mage, so you know the uh, the uh, roll and make shit up shtick really well. We need to abuse it more. <laughs> well, it'll come yeah. in time. Well, no, it'll come John... in time. Eh? Well, now you have to leave. Time, do you know what kind of character Scott? <laughs> yeah, Scott's a time mage. It's yeah, a joke. yeah. I, moving on. <laughs> anyway, yeah, moving on. I have a story for that later. Uh, that was about the tangent into the whole what Greg did in this campaign. But anyway, uh, that's oh, another crap. topic. Yeah. Um, anyway, back on topic. Cave uh, Johnson and, and Dipper, good interactions. They're like, it's interesting how the brothers are par- are so much of a parallel of the two kids. Like, Grunkle Stan is a wacky, crazy one like Mabel, and then Cave Johnson's the one like Dipper, smart, intelligent kind of thing. A nerd. Yeah, whatever, whatever, Greg, nerd. I'm a nerd and I'm proud of it. You're what up? Your butt's yep. a nerd. Also, he's smart enough to apparently contain a tear in, the sp- in, my, a tear in space inside a small glass orb. I think it's Tantamus blood. So say, hold on, since uh, since Weird Al was in this episode, I guess you can say both Dipper and Ford are white and nerdy. Yeah, yes, they are. Greg. All right, so uh, Greg uh, has now been kicked out of the podcast now. I'm, I'm going. I'm on a roll tonight. And that's and that's how Greg got kicked out of Hoof Hearted. I'm just gonna oh, man, drink myself out of that pun. Out. Continue. Yeah, we're bringing that back because let's face it, it's. It deserves to come back with how how stupid people are. But anyway, uh, anyway, I'm I'm I'll, so I'll just get, end it here with a ten at Dan. All right, and uh, let's see. There's um, there's just me left. Damn. So I, uh, I I really like this episode. As everyone said, the uh, the. RP stuff was really, really well done. Uh, I I loved all the self-referential humor, like when uh, at the end they're talking about the like end of Duck Detective, and and Seuss is just like, no, I, I saw that coming like a year ago. And I'm just Shit, like, that was me in the last God. podcast. Yeah, like it's so weird how Alex Hirsch just understands his audience so well. Like I, I don't understand. He clearly communicates with them a lot. Yeah, he does. It's it's different from most uh, most TV shows and stuff. So the uh, the the episode was really good. I, that's that's what my brain is saying. Uh, there's there was a lot of really good stuff, uh, and. I don't know, everyone's pretty much covered all the stuff I want to say, so we'll move on to Cryptogram of the Week, or three weeks in this case. So, uh, you know, the, the, the Cryptogram during the credits, uh, was, you know, nothing special, as always. It was, uh, Excelsa whatever, which is lovely. But, uh. Because the pre elf. Yeah, he's, he's. Oh god, I forgot about Hot Elf. Oh yeah, Hot Elf. Hot Elf, hot elf is great. <laughs> ten Best out of ten. Character. Yep, ten I out of ten. I ship Hot Elf with everyone. <laughs> right? Yeah, I forgot to give my rating. Ten out of ten. Yes. So we all the average is perfect a score. Ten out of ten. <gasps> perfect score. Yes. Uh, this just in. Deserved it. Hoof Hearted does not hate everything. Yep. Hundred hey! out. Best episode. Best episode. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, uh, so that was, uh, that was the in credits cryptogram. Then the, the journal cryptogram at the end was, uh, yeah, I mentioned last podcast that I wanted a, a more serious end cryptogram. I got what I asked for because the cryptogram was fun and games are great distractions, but small things can have chain reactions. 
So that kind of hints at what you're. Uh, who was it saying about the uh, the cycloptopus? Tree bear. That would be me. I think that was a sign. Yeah, <laughs> it also kind of hints at. It also kind of hints at the fact that uh, that the roll on the infinite the infinity sided die might have done more than just summon those guys in here, or in there, I should say, because in here. Yes, we are in Gravity Falls. Uh, you know, not actually a hipster, vaguely bisexual kitsune. Nope, that's fuck that's you. Thing. <laughs> but yeah, like I, I get the feeling the the die roll did more than just summoning all the enemies from the game. It probably affected more things than we know because it is infinity sided. Who knows what the fuck it can do? Well, I mean, Stanford explained it into it perfectly. It can literally do make yeah, anything no. happen. Yeah. Uh, I guess we do know what it can do because it can do literally anything. <laughs> so, yeah, it's is spooky things being set up, and uh, I, I think that covers our uh, coverage of the episode uh, itself. Ten out of ten, average score, the best score. <laughs> yeah, who's got plugs? Who's got pimps? We. Got all our own shit on our channel. You should watch. I guess I'll uh, briefly pop in and say I, rec I recorded a react for this episode raw. I'm all dressed up as Dipper because yeah, naturally look like Dipper. And yeah, that'll be up about the same time as this goes up. I'm gonna get it thrown up before uh, Wednesday. So uh, yeah, look out for that. If that's your thing, if you're into reacts and. Uh, yeah, we'll be having maybe more of those in the future, depending on how this one's received. Yep. Uh, uh, let's. Oh, oh, yeah, me and Teach are doing a Let's Play race of Cave Story. Yeah, that's almost done being edited. I've been. I keep getting dragged out of my house and unable to edit it, but it's almost done. The first so, episode shall be go up in what? Maybe a week or two. Yeah, uh, maybe. I. I a week I, or when, two. Depends when this is done being edited, it might be out already by the time this goes up. Who knows? Shrug? <laughs> Better not end up like our last race. No. You mean, uh, the... When's the second episode of... No, shut up. Yeah, when's the second happening. episode of a super lesbian horse RPG? Well, no, shut up. Oh, never? Oh, okay. <laughs> it's never happening. I, I said that. It's never happening. <laughs> but yeah. Thanks for watching the mystery cast and this other shit after, which is like episode 2.5. Uh, thanks. Catch you next time. Stay mysterious. Oh. Ray Mysterio. No, John Cena. <laughs> Mysterio. <laughs>